Well, good morning, church family. How are we doing out there? Good. Awesome. Everybody's awake. That's good stuff. Hey, you know what? In a few weeks, we're about to dive into a busy season. We're going back to school. There's going to be lots of things going on. We're getting back into sports and we have kids. You know, the crazy's about to happen. So I just thought it was a great time to just pause for a minute and just reflect. Because if you guys were here last week, you knew we heard an incredible message. Um, Pastors uh, gave us an incredible message of just kind of where we're at on the kingdom timeline. And so we can kind of see like they laid it all out for us of, guys, we're getting close. Like God could come back anytime. Like God is getting close on this kingdom timeline. And so if you haven't had a chance to go back and listen to the message from last week, make sure you go back to YouTube or uh, Facebook and get caught up on the message because they were talking about the mark of the beast and they were talking about that the spirit of the antichrist is here now. And I really do think as I was preparing this message, we know that if you, if you think about it, the spirit of antichrist would love nothing more than to distract you, to kind of get you off guard, to keep you busy, say busy, to keep you busy, wound up in your mind, so distracted and so caught off of what God has planned for you to do. God has good things he, he's planned in advance for you to do. And, and the enemy does not want you to walk out any of that calling for yourself. And so I believe that this was the day that God said, it's time. I have more for my people. God wants you to know that he has more for you. He has way more than you're actively walking out, and it is time to start living that out. I'm Brandy Keith, and I'm the life group pastor here at MMC. And I believe God just like birthed this message in me so strongly. And I'm going to, I'm excited to be able to speak to you this morning about a message that I'm just calling how to live in the more. Because God has these infinitely more things that he has for us. And and we just get an opportunity to walk them out if we will just listen to what God has for us. And so uh, Tony Heavens, um, well, actually, Shannon O'Dell says a great, great quote. And he just says, look, we have one chance, one shot, one life to make it count for eternity. We got to make it count because the kingdom timeline is counting down. We know that there's a clock that's ticking. And you know what? There's things that God has for you and only you and only you can do them. And so Tony Evans says this, it says, If you're a believer, you're not supposed to be an average human being. You are a candidate to see the working of God's immeasurably more power at work within you. And I think that's a really cool reminder that we have so much stored up into us, but I believe God was saying that now's the time. Now's the time to be encouraged. Now's the time to be strengthened. Now's the time to give God access and start walking out the good things that he planned in advance for you and you alone to do. And I'm gonna jump right into this, like hit the ground running. We're gonna be in Ephesians 3. And so you guys can open up your Bibles with me, but we're gonna just jump in and and take a back step into Ephesians 2. And Paul is gonna tell us right off the bat, Ephesians 2.10, it says, we are God's masterpiece. You're a work of art. God took detail in you and we are his masterpiece. And he created us a new, say new, In Christ Jesus, when you accepted him in your heart, when you turned your life over to Jesus, all things got new. So it doesn't matter what kind of crazy you got going on in your life. God is up to something. God can absolutely turn and flip the script in your life. And usually when things get crazy, you can know that good things are on the way. As a believer, that's your birthright. As as a believer, God's up to something in your life. So when you see these things, get crazy. You just remember that God created you new. And so you could walk out the good things that he planned for you long ago. See, God has good things planned just for you. Before you were ever born, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, God had a thumbprint and a fingerprint unique for you. God knew you intimately. He knew exactly what he was going to place with inside of you. He knew how you were going to thrive. He knew how you were going to grow and breathe and grow into this beautiful masterpiece that he was making. Before you were ever born in your mother's womb, that's how God knew you. 
Isn't that cool? So you are a work of art and God has things that he planned for you and only you to do. And so I want to just tell you, you know, you've got more in you. You've got more in you. I feel like God spoke that to me earlier this year to me and my husband. I just felt like God said, you got more. You have more. And I was like thinking of a plethora of things because, you know, like as you walk with God, he places these promises in your heart. And as you kind of just continue to go along this journey with God, he begins to show you things and he begins to stir these things and things start rising up in you. And they're the things that God wants you to walk in and walk out, you know, as he's walking with you. And so I was thinking about several things and God kind of honed it down to a few and says, these, this, is what, this is what it's time for. This is the more I have for you. And so I feel like that's what God wanted you to know, that there is more in you. God has more for you. And, you know, our purpose is all the same. Our purpose is to glorify God, to make him known. But our callings are all different. Because just like I said, you have a unique thumbprint, a fingerprint that is just yours, uniquely to you. Our callings are all unique. There's only one you. There's only one voice that sounds like you. No one else can be you. And there's several things that you have, God has planned you to do that only you can do. And see, and God is just looking for a yes so that you can go and do all those good things that God planned for you to do. But I just want to tell you this, no matter what, God has somebody for you to reach. Somebody is on your radar of somebody that you're going to impact and it's going to look differently for you than it is for me. But whatever you're doing, God has a calling for you. And it may look completely different. It's snowing. And it may look completely different. (laughs) It may look completely different than what you're doing right now. Like it could be similar to what you're doing, but it could look completely different than what you're doing right now. So don't be afraid of just like walking with God and just walking it out. And that's uh, what I'm realizing as I'm going along in my own walk with God. You know, I felt like God birthed a calling in me a long time ago and I just knew I'm gonna be here in the church. That's what I'm gonna do. And you know, as I got to going, God made some very specific things clear to me but it was just a process. Say process. Sometimes it's a process and you just got to get in the process. God just needs your yes to get in the process. He just needs your yes to start going and then he'll make all the details clear as he starts to go. Amen. And that's so clear in the story that we're going to talk about with Paul because God was working out a process in Paul. And what I love about the story of Paul is Paul wasn't perfect, all put together Christian. No, Paul was killing Christians. On Paul's way, he was going about and he was killing Christians and because that's the way that he thought he was going. And, and you know the story, if you know the story, God knocked him off that horse and said, hey, Paul. I called you for a different purpose. Now get up and walk this way. And I'm telling you what, when God gets your attention that kind of way, you're going to walk different. God's going to like start doing things different than you. When God gets your attention like that, it's going to be different. You're going to walk out things differently. And that's what Paul did. And so he got up and he was a little discombobulated, but I'm telling you what, he just got up and he said, I just feel like God's telling me to go tell people. And you guys know the story he was going to tell the Jewish people about faith in Jesus because he had it all wrong. And you know what? They weren't listening to him. And so his real calling was to go and tell the Gentiles, which that's all of us because we're not Jewish, okay? But that was all of us that you have a hope and a future in Jesus. See, I had it all wrong. See, I thought I was doing things my own way and it would all work out. But no, Jesus got my attention. He got my heart. And I'm telling you what, there's a better plan for you. And that's the same message of hope that's for you and me this morning. There's a better plan for you. God has more for you that he's planned out in detail for just for you. And you don't know what it's going to be until you just start walking out in this calling. And that's exactly what Paul was doing. He just felt an overwhelming, like, let's go kind of thing, you know? And so he just began to tell people about Jesus. And like I said, some people were listening. And I'm telling you what, people were getting saved. People were giving their life to Jesus. They were radically getting changed from the inside out. And then all along the way, Paul was just walking along and all these house churches started popping up. Why? 
Well, because Paul knew these guys are getting saved. They're finding out about Jesus. But look, I can't stay here. I've got more I've got to go do. See, Paul was like this forerunner, this, this apostle, if you will. And an apostle is one that doesn't stay put. He's the one that's breaking ground. He's the one that's paving the way. An apostle was the one who was sent off or sent out. And see, Paul was just going out and doing what God was putting in front of him. People were getting saved, and Paul knew that he needed to gather them together in one local spot, and churches started popping up all over the place. Why? Because he knew that me and you needed a place to gather. He knew that you and I were stronger together. He knew that if he left you without somebody to, to watch over you, to have a place to gather, that you'd get picked off. You would get, get out there in the world and somebody, it wouldn't take long, somebody would come in there and start ridiculing your faith to tell you you're kind of an idiot for believing that stuff. I mean, come on. Like, for real? Like, how bad was it? I mean, like, come on, don't you remember? It was kind of good over there. And then they got the archaeologist over here pulling out the dead bones, you know, that you buried, remember? Because they were dead. And that life was dead. So move on, right? And that's what Paul did. He was building these churches because he knew that you and I would need that kind of hope. You and I would need the encouragement and strength of gathering together in a local body. And that would become the church. So I think you and I, if we kind of forget that the local church was a place that we can be strengthened, but it is the hope of the world. The church is the hope of the world, guys. But guess what? You and me both, we are the church. You and me both, we are the church. And guys, we need the church. We need the church. We need a place to gather. We need to be in these seats gathering every week. We need to be here. Why? Because we are encouraged and stronger when we're together. Amen? So if you want to know the good things that God has planned out for you, if you want to know the more that's available to you, I would tell you number, point number one is to get involved. I'm telling you what, you need to get involved to the local church because God is up to something in the local church. There is so many things that God has done through the local church that's going to impact you. And maybe for you, getting involved just looks like, hey, I'm going to make a commitment to being here every time the doors are open. And maybe that's too radical for you, but maybe you say, I'm going to be here every Sunday. I need to get my butt planted in a seat in this church every Sunday because I know I need to be strengthened. I know that my hope is in the local church and I need to find a seat with my name on it. Amen. Your name's not going to be on a seat, but you do need a seat in the local church. And maybe, you know, maybe that's an extra step for you is you need to get plugged into a group. There is people that need to encourage you and walk alongside of you. You can't do this life alone. This takes too much bravery, too much courage. This is going to take the local church doing it together. And there's a group for you. A lot of times we get so stuck in our mindsets of how things always were and used to be that we can't figure out and we can't see all the things that God has good that's planned for us. Sometimes we need somebody to come alongside of us and say, you, my friend, you have more in you. You're not using it yet, but God has more in you and he's just waiting to pull it out. And sometimes he just needs somebody that's a good friend that says, hey, you got more, you got more. So maybe you need to get involved into a group, but maybe, maybe for you, you're just ready. You're just in that moment that you need to go deeper. So maybe for you, you need to get involved on Saturday night prayer. I'm telling you what, the, the miracles and the power of God that you're feeling right here on Sunday mornings is because people are gathering on Saturday night and praying over you. They're praying over every seat. They're praying over every word that's being spoken. God is ready to strengthen and encourage you, but you got to get involved. Say, get involved. You got to get involved. And so maybe for you, go to the MMC app, click on get connected and see all the opportunities that we have to serve. Maybe for you, it's your time to get back into serving. Maybe it's just, you've taken a break for too long, or maybe for you, you've never taken that step to get involved. I'm telling you what, there's something that is a power for, for you to do that you're never going to get there if you don't get involved. So start, you know, looking at opportunities that might arise, but I'm telling you what, it just comes from you getting involved. 
And I love looking back to see what kind of God has done over all the years. Because as I came to this church and I gave my life to the Lord, I just knew I needed to have my butt planted in a seat every single week. I needed the hope and encouragement of Jesus right here that you were going to get. I needed to be filled up right here. So I was going to be here every time the doors were open. But I also started serving on the greeters team. I just wanted people as they walked in the door to feel welcome. I didn't want them to think that they were a name that nobody knew. God knew them and God picked them out for an inheritance and God had a plan and a purpose for them and he wanted them to feel welcome in his church. And so I wanted to be that person that just wanted them to come in the door like, come on in, you're in here. Come on, the water is fine. Come on in here. And so just, you know, that was just something I jumped on board with. Years later, I've kind of found that, you know, that was part of my calling. I know that part of my calling is for just to encourage people. I love just to come alongside of people and look and say, look, God has way more for you. I promise. Look, if it's not good, it's, he's not done yet. I'm just telling you, God has more for you and you just need to get involved and start serving, get plugged in to wherever God, you know, and watch God work. I've also watched God move mightily. Like it's crazy. God put me through Bible college for almost for free. Like literally it was cheap. <laughs> I'll just say it was cheap. And that was like one of my primary desires when I got saved is I wanted to go to Bible college, but I did not feel smart enough to go, nor did I feel qualified. And you know, all the lists that you make the excuses when God's calling you to do something. And it was just like months of God asking and me being going, um, <laughs> but see, God just needs your Yes. And then he works out all the details as you're going. And so it's kind of funny. We found ourselves at this conference one time around this round table and these smart dudes in suits and ties. And we're not wearing that kind of stuff. If you know my husband, he's, I don't know that he's ever worn a suit and tie in his life. So we're sitting around this table going, what are we doing here? And so at the end of the conference, they were talking about a scholarship and a grant that they were giving for people that were working in ministry. And I happened to work at the church. And so I got to go to college for almost for free because I was plugged in, going to the right places at the right time. Just because I was going to conferences that the church was offering, I was plugged into a round table and God was doing the rest. Amen? You guys can clap. That's good. So guys, we need the church. There's great stories that are birthed out of the local church. And you may say, look, I'm not called to ministry. Hey guys, I'm just gonna be honest with you. We're all called to ministry. We're all called to reach somebody. But you may not be called to like speak on a platform or like called to like serve. In, or, no, you are called to serve, okay? We need you. <laughs> this is a large ship. I don't know if you know. Um, you may not be called to speak like, publicly or anything like that. But I'm telling you what, God still has a plan for you to impact people. I know my father-in-law, um, Ron Keith, if you know him, you know, uh, I love his story because he will tell you that he was a scrapper in his day and you wouldn't know it now because he's such a sweet guy. You know, he's in his seventies, uh, late seventies. But anyway, he, um, you know, just God, he would tell you, God, he was like a Paul story. God knocked him off his horse, radically got saved, and God took all of the hate and the fighting out of him, and he radically changed. And you know what? He said, you know, all my brothers were called to preach, and I just never felt that calling. I never felt to, like, go into ministry. I, what I did feel called for is to work with my hands. I was really good with my hands. And I just, I felt like my calling was to build. And you know what? It's a good thing for it. Because the building that we're setting in here is built by Ron Keith. Amen, right? That's crazy. And if you know Ron, like half the place out here, the reason it looks so beautiful is for one, Misty and Brad are slave drivers. But number two, now God has a big vision and he's working out his plans because he knows his time is short. Guys, we are looking at the kingdom calendar and we have things we got to do. And God was preparing a campus and getting it all done because he was going to start bringing people. Because people need the hope of the world and that is Jesus. Amen. And you know what? Half the campus out here was either planned out or built by Ron. And I'm telling you what, he can work circles around you. These young guys out here, I'm telling you what, they can't keep up. I'm just being honest if you know Ron. But you know what? I tell you what, those 
um, those people that were working alongside of Ron, those ones that were serving on the maintenance team and would have a work day, they were like, please don't invite me back. <laughs> But seriously, there was such impacts that were made. I know that, you know, Ron had a, or our father-in-law had a, a bout with, um, with a health uh, crisis there not too long ago. You know what? There were so many of you that were like voicing concern and being like, hey, how's he doing? We're praying for him. Hey, how's he doing? He doesn't even attend this church, but that's Misty's father. And you know what? He built half this church just because he was called to build with his hands. And I'm telling you what, there was people that were impacted by him and would just come and sit and listen to him talk because he had so much wisdom. See, that's the power that you're missing. See, a lot of times we try to figure out our calling and what God has next for us. And I'm telling you what, if you'll just get connected in the local church and start serving along somebody, you're probably gonna find your next job. You're probably gonna find your next partner or your next you know, friend or, or whatever mentorship you, you're, you're needing. Because I've watched people go, walk through the local church, be healed, get strengthened and walk out and go to North Carolina and live out their calling, you know, just wherever it is that God's calling you to. But guys, the hope of the world is still in the local church. Amen. And you need to get involved. And I just want to, I think it's so cool that Paul reminds us, and we're going to read this passage here in a minute, but Paul reminds us in chapter three that, you know what, it's not always going to be easy. And you know what, you're, you're, you're calling or you walking out this more that God has for you is never gonna just be an easy ride. There's going to be conflict, say conflict. There's gonna be tension and then there's gonna be growth. And it's so hard to walk through this because it's not an easy and it's not a comfortable place. And you know, I think the tension was back, even back as early as the Garden of Eden because there's always a tension, you know, there's always that tension, you know, of a choice to whether or not you're going to bail or you're going to stay, you know, and walk out the process. And see, that was always the deal. The enemy was after you from day one. So you're always going to feel that tension. When God calls you to do something, there's always going to come a tension. Well, the kids, I can't, I can't put the kids up in nursery because, you know, they won't make it. Or I can't, I can't do this. Or, you know, we just go down the list of all the excuses that we make. But God doesn't need your excuses. All he needs is a yes. All he needs is a yes, and he will begin to line out the details as you go. And that was the decision that was made way back when, when you said yes to Jesus. And that's all he needs. His calling was all ready for you. So now you just need to go. And so Paul does this beautiful thing where he prays for us as believers. In Ephesians three sixteen through 19, he prays this, this prayer. He says, and I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources. I just want to pause right there. God, there's nothing that's impossible for the Lord. There's just nothing impossible. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. There's nothing that he can't do or that he can't flip the script on. So I just want you to know, you're going to need him to pull those resources out, but he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit as you will just spend time with him, you know? But you're going to need that inner strength as you go. And then he says, then Christ will make his home in your heart as you learn to trust in him. And then your roots are going to grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And then you're going to know the, and then he wants you to know the, <laughs> and may you have the power to know all, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how deep and how high his love is. I'm sorry. When I was reading that scripture, I was thinking about a couple weeks ago when the kids uh, did the MMCM takeover. And that was one of the things that they preached one time is for you to know how long, how wide, I don't know the actions <laughs> and how deep and how, anyway, God wants you to know how much he loves you, but he doesn't want you just to know of him. He wants you to experience him. And so a lot of times experience that comes through hardships, doesn't it? I mean, you can't really know somebody until you know them. You know what I mean? Until you had that massive falling out and you're like, dang, I don't even know if I want to do this. But you know, it's funny because that's the tension that I'm talking about. And you have the decision right then to stay in the process because remember, you're in the process 
and then God will walk you out to the other side. See, you were never meant to stay stuck in the process. See, if it's not good, God's not done yet, amen? And I love what Craig Rochelle says. It says, God is not going to ask you to do great things and not give you the resources to do what he called you to do. He's just not going to ask you to walk through that marital dilemma, the, 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 the dilemma, dilemma, sorry, I can't talk half the time, you know. They give me a microphone, it's like Moses, you know, they called him to speak and he's like, I can't talk, Lord. I got the same problem, okay? But my husband has a book, it's like a dictionary of brandy words, so he just writes one down every time, it's awesome. But you know, um... <laughs> God's not going to give you a dilemma in your marriage that he's not going to give you the resources to walk it out through that process. So that's not the time to bail when it's getting difficult. That's not the time to say, well, I must have married the wrong person. I'm going to have to get out of this one. That's a straight lie from the enemy because the enemy does not want you to inherit the good things that God has planned for you. You have no idea how God's going to move through your marriage. You have no idea what he's going to teach you if you will stay in the process so that he can work through you because there's a whole new generation that has no idea, no concept of why marriage is important, of why marriage was the foundation of the relationship between man and a woman because God was going to bless that thing. He said, if you'll let me in it, I'll bless you, and then you'll walk out every good thing. No good thing will you withhold from those who walk uprightly with you. God, the marriage covering was the blessing that God instituted, and he said, then go and be fruitful and multiply. I mean, my gosh, that's a whole lot of something for another day, probably in a marriage series, but I'm telling you what, God has good things for us and he's not going to withhold from us, and so you don't have to run from those problems. I know it's uncomfortable, Come on. The tension, when the tension comes, it's not comfortable. You know, when the business deal is going awry and you're like having to stay in it, God has good things planned for you. You don't have to run from those things because I'm telling you what, you're not alone in your struggle. And that's what we miss a lot of times. See, when, um, when my husband and I have tension, because I know none of you ever have tension in your marriages, but when we have tension... Sometimes after 10 years long, I have started to realize that I'm not the fixer because sometimes I like for God, you know, like to just fix him. Like I want God to do what he's going to do. And so when I feel like he's not, when I feel like my husband's not doing what I think that he should be doing, there's a little tension. And what I've learned after 10 years of marriage is that God is in the struggle with me. He's working through me in him and he's going to get us through the other side. And a lot of times what I'm learning and I'm learning this is instead of being frustrated and getting all up in it, I just got to take a step back and learn to spend time with him. And this is so good because I was thinking about what time meant. And time is literally, I'm going to make my own acronym out of this. But time is taking intentional minutes every day. And so when I've got this tension going on with my husband, I'm learning that I need to take some time away and just reconnect with him. I just need to get alone with him. I just need to get on the same page with him. So for us, a lot of times it's like, let's get out of our house. Let's go to Rogers. Let's go anywhere. Let's take a walk. Let's get outside of what we're normal, our normal, and let's go spend time together because we just need to get on the same page. And a lot of times it's not, we're not talking about the issues, although I know the issues there. Come on. We know the issues there. And we know that at some points we've got to figure out how we got to talk about that. But right now, that's not the point. The point right now is just to take time together, to reconnect, take those intentional moments together. We just got to get back to the same page and saying, hey, you and I are on the same team. We're in this together. We're in this for the long haul. It's you and me, babe. We're going through this together. And that's the same thing God wants to tell you. That's why he says, if you'll take time with me, I'll remind you of all the things that you need to know. See, I'm not going to forsake you or leave you. And see, I love that because that's what Joshua, God told Joshua over and over and over again. Remember, Joshua was going into new land. Come on. That's a promise from God. 
God was going in, or he was taking him into new land. And he was saying, look, Joshua, God was saying, look, lock eyes on me. Be brave. Be brave and courageous. Joshua, be brave. Be courageous. Now, did you hear me? Be brave. Be courageous. Why? Because you weren't going to feel brave or courageous, right? You weren't going to feel it in the moment. And God needed you to take that time away with him so he could fill you with inner strength. See, I love the definition of courage because courage is literally being filled with inner strength. And we are not going to have the kind of inner strength that we need to walk out all the good things that God has planned for us. See, you can have those things because you have more in you, but you're never going to have those things if you don't go get your courage. And your courage takes time. It takes time in God's presence. It takes time for you just to reconnect with him, to God spend those intentional moments with him every day. Why every day? Well, because dang, time flies, right? And it's much easier to get on the same page if you'll stop and take intentional moments every day. 15 minutes in your word will change your life. And I'm just telling you that because there is stuff every single day that's going to hit your life. And God says, I will give you heads up on that. I will give you the mentorship that you need. I will give you the inner strength and the peace that you need if you'll come spend time with me. And I think that's the biggest myth is that you don't have time. You have time. And see, what's great about God is he transcends time. So he's able to make more time for you if you'll just go make him your first and give him your time. Because see, that's the principle of the first. It was never about what you and I could do on our own. It was what God was going to do for you and on behalf of you. But you need to be filled with his inner strength because you're going to need his wholeness, his power, so you can go out and walk out these things that has, God has written all over. Your name is on something this morning. God has great and precious promises that he wants you to live out. But you're going to have to get up some courage. And courage takes time. Time in God's presence, time letting him reconnect with you and remind you that, hey, we're on the same team. I've got a game plan for you. Let me show you. And in Ephesians 3.19, uh, Paul wraps it up in this awesome prayer, and he just says, then. And Misty told us, when we see that word then, we got to look back on what was before. Well, what happened? Well, after you spend time with God and he fills you, then you'll be complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And so why is that so important? Well, it brings us this, to this awesome verse in Ephesians 3.20. And if you know it, some of us know it by heart. And it says, now to him who is able, say able, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything you can ask or think or imagine. But here's the kicker. It's according to the access that you give him. It's according to the work that you're going to allow him to do in you. So I just want to ask you, what kind of access are you giving him? What kind of time are you giving him? What kind of habits or differences do you need to make? What kind of changes need to take place? And I'll just tell you, it can look different for all of us, but I'm telling you what, God can open up doors no man can shut. God can do it infinitely more, but we got to give him access. We got to let him, and we just got to give him our yes. And here, here's, here's the thing as we close. There's three things I want you guys to kind of walk away with today. Number one is you got to learn about him. You got to be planted. My butt is planted in this seat. That's got to be your mantra, okay? Every single week. Every single week. You, so you need the encouragement of the local church. But number two, you need to experience him. You need to listen to the message and then try to figure out what that looks like for you and walk it out during the week. And I'm telling you what, you're not going to be able to do that because the tension is going to come and you're going to feel the stress and the pressure when you're stretched. You're going to need to be strengthened by spending time with him. You got to get alone with God and you can't wait till you feel like it. When you feel the stress, that's when you need to jet and go spend some time. Amen. Look, God can do infinitely more. Let's give him access. Amen. Let's pray. So, Lord, I just thank you so much, Father, for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, to be gathered together with these local believers. God, just thank you so much. God, this was always your plan A. 
There was no plan B, and I'm just so thankful, God. But this is the place. This is the church. We're going to be strengthened this morning. I'm just so thankful, God, for your presence in this place. And maybe you're here this morning, and God is calling you out. Maybe God's saying, you know what? I don't kind of have the kind of access that I need for, you, for, you to, for, for me to do the things I have planned for you. I just want you to know that God is saying to you, there's more in you. God has infinitely more things that he has planned for you, but he just needs you to give him access. He's going to give you the resources that you need. He's not going to leave you high and dry. He's not going to leave you with lack. He's going to give you courage and strength, and he just wants to spend time with you. So this morning, if that's you this morning, I just want you to know God never wanted you at a distance and at arm's length. If there's been a season of time where you've just struggled, I'm just telling you, this is the time when God wants to pull you back. God wants relationship, not religion. God wants relationship with you. And this morning, if you maybe are God stirring in your heart and you, you don't know what I'm talking about, about that inner strength, that courage, and you don't know what I'm saying about having a real relationship with Jesus, maybe this is your moment for you just to Nobody's looking around. Maybe this is just you. Stretch out your arm and say, you know what? I need Jesus. I need him. So this morning, if that's you, just slip up your hand so I can know who I can be praying for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, I love it because God brought you to the local church this morning so he could have a relationship with you. So this morning, we're going to pray a simple prayer together, and we're not going to leave anybody to pray alone. So we're just going to pray something like this, and this is how you invite Jesus into your heart. Just say, Dear Jesus, God, I've done this life on my own, and it's not working for me. But God, I'm giving you full access this morning. God, come into my heart. Flip the script. Make me brand new. And God, help me to be obedient, to give you my yes, to walk out all the good things you have planned. In Jesus' name.